Hey guys, new video here. How I can sustain my maps. So I'm making this video because on stream every day there's a question Can I get a screenshot of your Alice? Can I see your Alice? What T6 did you shape? What T10s should I shape? Is it worth full atlas completion how do you get three sextants how come my sextants keep disappearing when i put four on what unique do unique maps uh uh, uh do unique maps matter like uh so whenever i usually the one is like if i if i hear uh can i see a screenshot of your alice or can i take a screenshot of your alice then it's like a huge red flag because it's you're gonna you're gonna booty blast yourself okay because um like screenshotting your, the atlas means that you don't know how the atlas uh like kind of like the the inner workings work so i'm gonna make a video and go over all that first and hopefully you have a somewhat understanding of the atlas so that you can adjust uh you can adjust the things around to your liking and if you ever need to change it right because if you screenshot someone's atlas what happens when you want to change your strategy then you can't right you have to ask for another screenshot for someone else so that's kind of weird uh so I'm, I'm just gonna make the video so uh let's go over atlas rules not much has changed in a long time besides um besides uh, the Alice has shifted around, so there's like new more, oh man, I'm losing on 159C. Um, you're changing more, uh, uh, the more meta has been shifted, right? So, for example, uh, Barrel Chamber Switch, the UGS is a little bit different in terms of the boss fight and, um, you know, no beyond, things like that. But like, okay, overall, how does it work, okay? It, when you were killing monsters in a map, okay, let's say a tier one flooded mines. The white monsters can drop that map. The, they can drop the uh, same level as the map. So 68 monsters can drop 68 maps. A uh, glowy monster, right? A glowy monster can drop, that's not the boss, can drop a, up to a plus one. So they can drop your 68 map and they can drop your 69 map, okay? A chance, not guaranteed. The boss can is the only one that can drop the plus two uh, map and once again it is a chance at a plus two map okay um, as long as you have the completion done so like for example if you if you have dungeon and peninsula done the boss can drop uh, the two and three but if you have nothing on the on the atlas it's your first time in the league then then they can't you have to have it unlocked okay or you have to have it connected if it's connected it can drop without it being um, completed right lit up or bonus completed okay uh, another thing to note is that bonus means it adds one percent um, chance for higher map drop uh, uh, tier right here it adds that number um, to your total count but you do not have to complete the bonus to get the map to be activated as a drop which means uh, if you like for example if you, you see how you get the bonus by killing the magic uh, of killing the boss of a magic map let's say you were to run this dungeon white well then what happens if you kill the boss you won't get one atlas added one bonus added here to this number right here but you will have this map light up on your atlas which means that like let's say you, you start to do ramparts and you kill you do a you kill ramparts glowy monsters they can now drop this dungeon map because even though the bonus isn't complete it's lit up and activated on your atlas okay that's very important for uh, atlas strategy later because sometimes people don't remember that bonus does not mean like that uh it, like they think bonus means that it can now drop but really just completion which means killing the boss okay and so like that's why like in the map tab and stuff uh, you can see like this little little white line to indicate completion and stuff so like make sure you look in here to make sure like alice bones complete and then like stuff like that right if you if you're really uh really checking okay so uh so that's one of the rules there so as you're getting your map up the most important thing is like you gotta figure out which maps you enjoy okay um so with the rules in mind you're, you're thinking okay what what maps do i really enjoy and those are the ones that you should be shaping all the way up until t16 t16 matters a tiny bit more because if you pick a really shitty layout map that has like no monsters let's say uh you pick uh beach okay uh you, you pick beach to be your t16 okay and unless you're doing some kind of ridiculous investment you're gonna have a hard time getting a lot of beaches just because the monster count is so low um and, and so that that kind of is but for the most part all the way up until t15 which means your t10s your i think you get three of them there are three t10s shaped into a t15 those 
you might as well just like pick whatever you want, right? Because because uh, the <clears throat> the more fun you have in a map, the more you play. The more you play, you get the more currency you get. The more currency you get, the more you can, the more things you can do in the game to have more fun. It's like a cycle, right? If you like, if you ask a streamer what map do I shape for T10, and I tell you to shape. Um, uh, I tell you, what, what are the t I show you to shape coves, and you're like, oh, okay, a streamer told me to shape coves. You go do it, and you hate that map, you're not going to be playing the game very long. So it doesn't even matter that someone told you to shape it, right? So fun comes first, okay? Pick maps that you enjoy all the way up to T16. Um, other things to note with the previous drop rules is that, um, so so when you, when you get to shaping and you pick one map that you want to do, the general rule is you are going to want to uh, clear all of that tier. So let's say, I'm going to use this as an example because this is an interesting scenario here. Let's say you want to only drop barrel chambers as T11. So what you'll do is you'll type in tier 11 here, or you can go to your map tab and do it. And you are going to uncomplete everything that's highlighted here, not the uniques. Uniques don't matter. Uh, uniques, you want to complete all of them, okay? But you want to uncomplete all like these normie T11s, except for the one you want to drop, which is your barrel chambers. So the way you can uh, uncomplete this is you can do three red sextants. It's always three sextants of the color of the map um, that you want to uncomplete and one scouring. Sell it to a vendor, you'll get a, um, uh, like a, uh, I forgot what it's called, like a, clue, a scour map unscouring, um, unshaping orb or whatever. I forgot what it's called. And then you will use it on the map and it'll be gone, right? You will lose the sextant bonus if it is applicable. So if you have all reds completed and then you uncomplete one, your sextant drop, your second count will, will drop down one, okay? Even if you had it before. It's important to note as well. So you're going to play all of, let's just, let's just say that the tier you want is X. So you will, you will clear all of X except for the map you want to drop. And then you will also clear X plus 1, right? That's tier 12 in this scenario, right? So you, you'll highlight 12 in here or your map tab. And you will remove all these 12s. Once again, you're keeping the uniques because those are just free bonus. Um, <clears throat> and they're treated as unique items, not as maps. Uh, and then so you'll clear all these. And then you do not need to clear X plus 2 because e only the boss can drop an up to plus 2. And that's, that's rare enough where it doesn't affect your map drops in the long run, okay? Um, uh, so the reason you're going to do this is because if a map drops of a tier and you have nothing in that tier, it will convert down one and search for a map in that tier. And if there's nothing there, it will convert down one and down one and down until it finds a tier where there is a map to drop. So if you complete all your tier 12s, um, when a tier 12 drops, it searches the atlas, it has nothing, right? So it goes down one to tier 11, and since your only tier 11 will be burial chambers, it will only drop that one, okay? That's the general rule there. Uh, now, there are special cases like burial chamber where, uh, remember, if a map is connected to a map, it can drop, right? Like higher tier that is, right? Because you don't care about the lower tier. You, you complete everything else besides X and X plus one. Complete literally everything else. Um, now, let's think about this Necropolis map here. Uh, oh, man, I'm losing so much money. Uh, let's think about this Necropolis map here, right? Because the drop rules, remember, is if a map is connected, it can drop. So because the Necropolis, you've cleared it, uh, it's still connected to the Barrow Chambers. So when you do Barrow Chambers, you will be able to drop this even if there's no bonus, even if there's, it's, it's completely unhighlighted from your map. That's very important to know. So then it's like, huh. So like, how, how can I do that then? Well, you gotta get your Elder's Orb. And by doing the Elder's Orb, what you do is like, if you're new, you enable your quest tracking and right here on the right side under your under your like text here, Zaba will tell you exactly what to do. She'll say, kill any uh, tier 10, 11, 12, etc., whatever it is, uh, Elder Influence map, you'll get your Shaper's Orb, you go, 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 go. Um, Eventually, you'll get to a state where it says kill Elder and his uh, Guardians on red tier maps. You clear all those, you get your Shaper's Orb, very nice. And then after that, she'll say, go into the Shaper's Realm, and then you'll kill Shaper. Once you kill Shaper, you go to his Templar's Laboratory, just follow the quest, and you'll get a elder, an Elder's Orb. And the Elder's Orb makes any map a T16, right? So what you can do in this scenario is you can use the Elder map on the Necropolis. The Necropolis becomes T16. It's no longer 12. So when the map is searching for the 12s, there's nothing. Thing. It drops down, converts to a barrel chambers. Now, most maps you decide to shape will not have this rule, this weird thing right here, right? This is like a, an off thing for barrel chambers, right? Because let me show you why. Let's say I shape my channies. My channies is a tier six. It is connected to a, a tier two, which is a naturally one higher if this wasn't shaped. But because um, uh, b because if I cleared all my tier uh, sixes and my tier sevens, it wouldn't matter that's connected to this because this is not a tier seven, right? Does that make sense? Obviously, this doesn't make it doesn't make sense here because I have a thicket shaped. But um, <clears throat> these shapings were just like 
Uh, I, I don't do anything but T16s, so my shapings don't actually matter anymore, right? And that's another very important thing to, to note when you ask a streamer or someone else for help with the Atlas about what you should do or ask for a screenshot. Because most people have a specific tier, let's say most people do T15s, T16s. In that scenario, we don't care about the T1 through T10 shapes, right? Uh, well, uh, T1 through T9 shapes. We just don't care about any of those maps that get shaped uh, at this point in the league. Reason being, we'll never run those. Uh, let me just show you real quick. If you watch my stream, you'll know I've never, uh, since I got my Atlas strategy set up, I have never bought a single T16 map, ever, uh, okay? And so, uh, and so these are my estuaries here. Let me just show you. Tier 16. These are my tier 16 pool here. Here's a second pool. This is toxic sewers. I was doing that for a while. And estuaries. The reason I have a second run tab, this is for bad rolls like uh, reflect or 90% avoidance that I'll do later on. Um, <clears throat> like on my own or I'll sell them. Right? So these are my T16 pools right now. I also have more in my, uh, in my dump tab. You can see my T16s there. These are my dump tabs. I just put everything in here after the map is done so I can sort later. Some T16s here, some T16s here, some more here, some more here, some more here. Uh, that's that's all my dump tabs. And then where's my <clears throat> where's my map? And then I have some unidentified corrupted T16s here. And uh, and yeah. <clears throat> so uh, I don't know weird flex, but whatever. I'm, I'm just trying to show that um, map stain is possible and it's very easy this league. And we'll keep talking about um, why that is. Okay, I'm just trying to explain the Atlas rules first so people can manipulate their Atlas um, uh, however they want. So the reason I show you that is because because I will never run out of T16s this league, why would I ever do anything less, right? Because XP is better, you know, loot is, uh, I guess, better because, like, T16s you can sell easier. Um, so because I will never do, like, a, like any of my shaped 1 through 10, I, it, like, the, the my shaping is completely arbitrary. Like, I, I might as well, like, instead of, uh, let's say, like, instead of City Square, I might as well have shaped Residence. I might as well have shaped um, Gardens, right? It, it doesn't matter to me. So when you screenshot some streamers, Atlas, you, you know, you might be copying something that they, they, they didn't even care about. They, like, it was so arbitrary that it's going to hurt you in the long run because, like, you know, these, like, aren't, like, that great of maps. Well, well City Square is all right. But, like, you know what I'm saying, right? So, so don't just, like, copy blindly the Atlas because some of the stuff is on there arbitrarily is what I'm trying to say. Okay, so now with those rules out of the way, uh, let's talk about the uh, little bonuses that you get. So, with any shape strategy, if you only want to do like one or two maps, whatever it is, the atlas is going to be min max. There's no like, there's no like, is this okay or is this okay? It's like if you do an atlas strategy, you will have a min max objective bonus here. For me, right now it's 155. Okay, that is. There's no way I'll change this to make this better. Uh, there's a lot of ways I could change this to make it worse. And the reason for that is because I have 155 means I've completed everything except for uh, X and uh, and X plus one. Well, it doesn't apply to T16s because um, since I have right now I have like elder cells, right? T16. There's no tier 17, so I can't drop tier 17. So I only need to clear my X, which is X is 16, which is four Jardians, and then I complete everything else, right? So now, since I complete these four Jardians, I can no longer drop in my maps, and then everything else amounts to 155. So I still get to use four sextants, okay? And the last sextant comes from um, Uber Elder. You have, I highly recommend getting an Uber Elder carry if you can't do it, so that you can get one extra sextant as fast as possible. It will help you out a bunch in terms of sustain, overall loot, overall fun, okay? And so now I have four sextants here. <clears throat> so how does this work? Basically, every percent gives you a chance to drop one tier higher, as long as it's within the monster drop rules that I stated before. So just because I have a 100% uh, chance to drop a uh, one tier higher if I have a hundred Atlas bonus. A white monster in a tier one map will still not drop a 69 map instead of a 68. Or a white monster, I should, I should do tiers. Going by monster level is a thing of the past. Um, <clears throat> A tier one monster, white monster, will never drop a tier two map because it's not within the monster rules, even if you have a 100% chance to drop one tier higher. Does that make sense? But what does that mean? That means the glowy monsters in tier one can no longer drop, and, and the bosses, of course, can no longer uh, uh, can no longer drop a tier one because if it were to drop a tier one, it gets converted up one level at least. So then it's a tier two, right? And this happens all across the atlas. So that's that's how it works. And then obviously you get above a hundred percent. Now you have a fifty-five percent chance to drop two tiers higher. Once again, still fits into the um, the monster drop rules, right? So white monsters in tier one can't drop two tiers higher. Um, glowy monsters in a uh, in a tier one map cannot drop like you know 
uh, a tier uh, tier 70, or uh, sorry, tier three map, okay? Does that make sense? Okay, um, and, and then so that's like the, the rules there. Uh, another, another thing to note is that, well, I think I said this before, but if you remove, if you somehow remove um, a, a, a colored map that was complete before, you will lose the section, so be careful of that, but you can always get it back. Um, another thing to note is that, so with a T16 strategy here, why do you remove the Jardians? And that is because you want to self-sustain. Buying maps is pretty painful, even though you can do it. Um, so what you can do is you can, when you drop these, you, whenever a tier 16 drops, it will only be the one that you eldered. For me, that's currently uh, cells, right? Uh, let's talk about some other uh, sustain stuff, okay? So now that we have the uh, the rules in place and why you're doing certain things, uh, let's talk about like how to actually sustain. So with T16s, I'm going off T16s, of course. Uh, you are absolutely going to want to use chisels. Okay, so uh, X-ray, uh, you will the minimum. Oh man, someone wants. Okay, I'm not going to do that because I'm making a video. I, I'm losing the monies right now. Okay, so the elder estuary here um, is a four chisel investment, then an alchemy. Okay, and then you're going to want to clear the mods you don't want to do. Reflect is okay because you guys wait for the sexton and then you will use a rare and then i do not roll for quantity or packs i just i just chisel everything first alchemy them re-roll the, the mods i'm not willing to do sometimes that's uh that's um sometimes that's like ellie reflect or physical reflect depending on uh, my build sometimes that's even 90 percent avoidance because that's like it makes the map not fun uh so you can re-roll whatever you want or you can keep keep everything if you can if like you have a damage over time build or something that can do every map mod congratulations and then i would say this league there's a small change that's made the the whale orb even stronger and that is well, first things first, um, the Beyond is gone, right? So uh, the Whale Orb can no longer re-roll your Tier 16s. So if you remember from last league, let's say I have this tab of Tier 16s and I corrupt all of them. Uh, um, a small number of these maps will convert to a separate T16 of this of uh, of just some whatever of some random pool, right? Like every map has like a that conversion thing into a different map that's set, and so a lot of your T16s that you wanted to run would become a different map, right? So like let's say my uh, I don't know, let's say uh, I forget what it was. Let's say my UGS became Ramparts. I don't want to run Ramparts. Uh, let's say it became like Cemetery or Phantasmagoria were two common ones. I don't want to run Phantasmagoria. Or, or um cemetery well cemetery is not that bad but i don't want to run those maps so you would lose that t16 okay small change i don't think this was in the patch notes but when you use a whale orb to corrupt one of your maps now it cannot change it literally cannot become any other map so if you if you whale orb a hundred estuaries they will all be estuaries no matter what awesome right if it turns un id'd it keeps the rolls that's an important thing to know it doesn't re-roll if it goes un id'd so as long as you filter uh down the columns beforehand those un id'ds are safe to run okay there's a chance of re-rolling which is why you have to filter again based on the mods you can't do after you corrupt but um but you will never lose that t16 map okay uh and then so reflect you can wait for the sexton again and then you know the ones you can't do you can sell uh why is the whale orb important well if you hit a, I'll just show you what I have on these. I, I had like a few hundred, right? So this is a lot of unideds. If you hit an unideed, you have gained 30% quantity. You have gained, uh, if you get the sextant, you get the quantity and you get pack size. So for one whale orb, which is one C, you're getting uh, uh, in that situation like 60 quantity and 15 pack size. That's crazy. And, and when you think about like uh, things like fragments, fragments are about one C each, but they only had 5% quantity. So it's just like ridiculous value. And these unideed, uh, the percentages cover the ones that don't. And then what else is there? Because sometimes it will reroll into just like no change right whatever um well th well you have eight mods so like look, look at this 130 quantity now this doesn't happen very often right but um uh here i'll, I'll just do this i'll just filter by uh, ty uh plus one two so these are my 120s these are my 130s these are my one one tens right uh these are my 100 so there's there's a lot of quantity gain let's say your average quantity is like between 60 or uh, yeah it's like between 60 and 80 right and then now your average is uh, is closer to 100 for one whale orb are you kidding me right now that's insane value you'd be you'd be really dumb not to do it and you might be going well it adds to the, the zaba cost right because like let's say you want to do uh domination and it's 3c well uh, well now it costs 3c three whales but but the quantity that you just gained is more than the cost of uh, uh of 
of what you would have spent on those three C worth uh, extra anyways, right? So it's like really crazy to not whale your maps this league because you can't actually lose them. So I would, for me personally, I would whale the map, okay? For sure, it is ridiculous returns. Uh, and it makes the maps a lot more fun. Okay, so what what else? Let's talk about Zalmots. Now, honestly, they're all garbage this league. Every single one of them is complete garbage. Abyss is actually pretty good because you can get like two socket, two socket Tomb Fists and two socket other things are like, aren't two socket Tombs are like over 10 exalts now and like Abyssal Liches are cool. The reason I don't do this is because it takes a long time. Let's say you get two additional abysses, and um, you get uh, you have to wait for it to like travel and backtrack around the map. It's just kind of annoying to do. So whatever. Um, Harbinger is it's okay. I've dropped some maps from this, but Harbinger got nerfed, so you now get one less Harbinger on average. It is two C cheaper to compensate, but they also nerfed the spawns. The spawns are noticeably less. They are noticeably uh, they are noticeably shorter uh, duration spawns. So you don't get as many uh, as many monsters in Harbinger. So that wasn't in the patch notes either. So that kind of sucks. Breach eh, breaches are alright because uh, with breaches you get your own splinters if you're doing any kind of uh, syndicate farming you can get pure stones which are huge uh, for sales right or for running for XP even if you run the normie ones because you stack up your splinters tools uh, pan uh, halcyon amulet which turns into pandemonious is big monies exopiage's blood is big monies uh, you know obviously uh, ashes eh, thorium spirit shield if you get the ashes mirror uh, if you get the choir of the, uh, or voice of the storms which choir storms a little bit of money but ashes is like not that great. UUL Needle is pretty damn bad because the, the shield is extremely rare. The other items aren't worth anything, but a pure UUL Needle um, stone is one monster level higher than a Tool Ash uh, Exopiage on the on the pure level from the um, It That Fled rank 3 bench. So that, that can be argued that getting the UUL Needle splinters is actually pretty good, right, for XPs and, you know switch up your your uh your pure stones a little bit right parandas eh, parandas like you don't get really enough coins you know, it's a bit of a jamble this could be very fun but not that great for maps because these guys can't actually drop maps right breaches the rare monsters in there can drop maps harbingers uh drop maps abyss monsters definitely drop maps uh and then domination is is pretty good because i, I just made a video on my the goal raven mass and solstice virgil interaction and that's that's insane so domination is the most fun if you're using certain like wonky mechanics uh, i love domination because it's quick the monsters are on the screen ready to be killed you move on you click on the shrine you get something crazy uh and then and then it's it's like it's wham bam thank you ma'am right like it's it's just uh it, it's just so fast and it's so fun and the monsters around each shrine can drop maps i mean mostly they're like white monsters right but like it's a lot of monsters, so you can drop some mass from that, but not not the best, right? Torment, wh what is this garbage? Get that out of here. Anarchy, uh, y y yeah, no thank you. Okay, these two are complete garbage, okay? Because you can't roll another Zaba model. I would not do these two. That's 15C. You could literally buy um, Elder Mass for cheaper than this. No joke right now. These two, complete trash. Never do these. Um, well, maybe you do these at, like, the, like these three. You never do these unless you're trying to, like, do some weird stuff at the very beginning of the league. Or, like, this one, um, if you're trying to, like, complete some stuff. But, n n no, no. Fortune favors the brave. Uh, I don't know. I'd rather just do the thing I actually want every every time. Someone can probably, like, math this out and see that it's, like, it's okay. But, whatever. 8% uh, is actually pretty damn good. Because, as you can see, in the past, we've had things that added 20% quantity when you use a Zalamod. Right now, nothing adds 20% quantity. Well, it's not really 20% quantity. It's 12% additional quantity because the Zaba gave, gave you 8 naturally, right? Now, when would you use this one? Well, if I were to use... If I were Sulfity farming, because Sulfity Scarabs um, and and getting like the big quantity maps is really awesome. Um, I would use this natural 8% from Zaba uh, if I if I was Sulfity farming, because that does affect the Sulfity uh, gains, okay? But that's really the only the only time. So, in terms of maps the same, if you were gonna min-max, which one would you do? I think you'd have to do one of these three, okay? I don't I don't have data, so I can't tell you which one's the best. Harbinger is still like, I guess, okay. Uh, maybe that's like the safer one, but like one of these three would be fine, okay? Uh, and then, I mean, I like Domination though, because it's like a little bit cheaper, but it has monsters, it has speed, and like, you know, it's, but, but like really, like just choose one of these three, okay? They're, they're all so garbage, it probably won't matter in the long run. I've been sustaining just doing Domination and stuff, and, and so that's the Zaba mod to run. What else are you going to put in your uh, T16s? Well, you're going to put in uh, Fragments. So what, are, what do Fragments do? So if you're not running a Scarab or something else, you put in three of these, and these are one C each. Even the Midnights, I think, are one C each. Uh, if you buy in bulk, maybe you can get them 
uh, possibly cheaper or they might be more expensive, who knows. So these are 5% quantity each if you put them into the map device like this, right? That's 15% quant, very nice. Uh, and let's say like, you know how in the last year I did a Harvey test and I got 130 maps out of, um, uh, out of uh, 100? Well, if I did put these in, you know, maybe I'd have a tiny bit less, right? It's not exactly 15% because you have to remember that it's additive and some maps already have like 130, 140, so it, it varies. But uh, overall, you'll get a few more maps if you do this consistently. Um, and, uh, and so yeah, I, I would do these because nobody really uses these for normal at Zuby anyways, right? So, I mean, let's be real, like they're, they're just there for quantity bonus. Um, okay, so, so that's, that's how you're going to sustain. Let's talk about the sexton. So, when I was running this, you want to, like, if you're a noob and you're kind of like struggling on money, because like white sextons are so cheap right now, because uh, all the bot, rampant botting going on. And, uh, and so, what's going to happen is uh, you want to find a map probably, if, if you enjoy that map, once again, fun trumps all, that has like three whites. So like, like you see like Toxic Sewer here, that's three white sextants to get you started, right? So one yellow, you can throw it on there. If you do things like Crater, Crater has four whites around it. Um, other, other maps have like four whites around it, really nice. So, but the most important thing is I would say four sextants no matter what. Now, why is that? Because the monster, the mo I have a sextant video if you wanna watch that about which sextants are good, but adding monsters, uh, adding cool stuff like, um, you see this reflected sextant right here at the very top? That one allows me to run all my reflected maps and that means I haven't wasted a map. It's not like, a, like some kind of sunk cost. You know, mirroring rare monsters means that instead of one monster in, in that group, there's two. And two rare monsters, obviously, more map drops, more loot, because rare monsters drop more than anything else. Uh, well, besides the boss. And um, this unidentified section is ridiculously good. Um, and then, the uh, obviously, the other things, mysterious barrels can be like monsters uh, or loots. And then um, you're just going to see a lot of pack size with sextants, right? More monsters to kill more maps to drop so definitely get yourself four sextants um and and i know it feels weird to like if you're poor to re-roll like the bad ones but definitely try to get monsters possibility of monsters watch my other youtube videos where i go over every single one and tell you which one's good and which one's bad and uh, another thing to note for new players if you sextant a, a unique map it does work for that map so let's say that like um let's say that like this dunes pillars of a rune was touching my estuary sometimes when you sextant this it'll be invisible like um it'll show that no sextant touched right and that's that's not a bug it just means that some unique maps can't get certain sextants like breaches abysses uh extra rare monsters things like that they, they just can't spawn on that unique map map but if you mouse over the map that the sextant is touching you'll see which one which sextant actually procced on the unique map if that makes sense okay so don't worry it's not a bug okay so don't, don't like overuse <laughs> sextants trying to get one okay uh okay so uh so uh, another thing is do you need uh shaper elder influence and that is no i've done two leagues now with no shaper elder influence the reason i don't like to do shaper elder influence is because i'm lazy and uh and if it, let's say even let's say there was a snare where you can run 50 of the map you want and do one map maintenance. I still wouldn't do that because I just want to do like, I just want to do the same map, not have to think about it because mapping is already annoying enough where you have to do like your fragments, your, your chai, your rolling, your sextants, your, your zavamats, you know, it's so annoying already that I don't want to do any of that stuff and adding in one more thing, I just want to play the game, right? So I'm not going to do the, the influence, but it is undeniable that elder influence is the best thing to, to go for if you are going to do elder blobs. There are plenty of YouTube videos on elder, uh, elder blobs, uh, how to do it, how to manipulate it. And, you know, if you get those portal spawns, oh my gosh, you're getting big loots, right? So that, that'll definitely help. It is uh, undeniable that the Elder Influence is the best um, to, to get a few more map drops here and there, but you don't need to do it as I've kind of shown with my tabs. And you know, a lazy player like me, um, you know, you, you probably won't want to do it, but once again, it is, uh, it is the best if you're really struggling there. Uh, anything else here? Other than that, that's just, that's all I've been doing. You don't need to do anything crazy. Oh, another thing to show you guys. Okay, so uh, another strategy you could go for. So you know how, um, so let's let's math it out. I'm missing four, oh, I, got, I got 29, uh, uh, ooh, I got 29 exalt sale. Uh, 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 sir, uh, can you do 29.3? Okay, so um, I am missing four Jardians, right? 
uh, Ponix, uh, Chimera, Hydro, and uh, Minotaur, right? So if I got four extra bonus here, I'll be at 159. That's 4% extra chance at getting a plus two. But if you divide four by, uh, by 55, what was that, like eight, 9%, that's actually eight, 9% more chance at getting a uh, tier two, right? It's pretty, it's pretty cool. So what you could do if you wanna go full potato mode, okay, you're okay with, uh, with trading and stuff, is you'll do this. You can complete your, uh, your four Jardians, okay? You'll, you'll overall, in the long run, drop a few percentage more, uh, more uh, T16s, uh, uh, okay? And, and here's what you'll do, here's what you'll do. Because you'll get one Sexton too, which is amazing. Adding one Sexton to a map is really cool because let me show you why. Let's say that this uh, Mysterious Barrels is uh, Loot Barrels, which is good, but there's no monsters in there, right? Feels bad. Well, another sextant could now take the place of that monster sextant, so overall your maps feel so much juicier. You know what I'm saying? So uh, so that's the reason to get five sextants. And five sextants is so pog. I actually might try that. And let me show you why that's totally fine, okay? Here we go, boom. These are T60 maps. They are 15C, I've, I've done a, um, uh, I've done a search for these as of right now, so the current prices. It's 16C, you're probably gonna be paying 16C. If you want bulk, you pay a little bit more. Look at this. This is like a, a common, um, a common T16 that people do, right? This is Elder Barrow Chambers. Look at people have like hundreds of these. 15C. Oh my God. So if you, oh, let me do this trade real quick. Um, if you want to do, uh, if you want to do that strategy, you sell your Jardian maps. If you're selling in bulk, maybe you can get a 0.51C more. You just buy the maps you want forehead right you just buy the basketball so so uh what is the benefit of that you now get one extra sextant you now have more chance to drop t16s if you're willing to sell uh if you're willing to sell the um uh the jardian maps you can just buy all the elder maps and still make that little one c profit on top of it right isn't that crazy so you could do that uh i don't know maybe, maybe that's maybe that's too much i don't know is that too much no, I think that's actually a fair strategy for new players because it gets you into the groove of like arbitrage and stuff, right? Because like these maps, like early on, there was like some like uh, there was like those uh, hard, no, hard, like horizon orb exploits where you could make big monies on the on the shifting of the T16. But like that's that's neither here nor there. Okay, so uh, so yeah, that okay, that that, that just oh man, I I feel like kind of retarded talking about that because like you have to trade so many maps. But for the enterprising uh, new adventure in Poe. You gotta do what you gotta do, right? You gotta do what you gotta do. That's it, I think I explained everything there. Uh, I'll make this a video, I'll link it in my chat, so now when people ask for Alice, I'll have an actual Alice video. That was a long time, that was a uh, 32-minute 30, 30 video. Two, hey, hey, this is my second YouTube video today, by the way. Uh, yeah, 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 hard at work today. Okay, bye everyone, bye, thank you.